This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. We live in a world filled with discontentment. So how do you, how do you find contentment in such a restless world? How do you find contentment amongst a nation of people that are so discontent? Well, I'm going to tell you the answer. You may not like it, but it is, it is the answer. Celebrate the holidays with Arrow Records' Christmas in the City Part 2 CD. Christmas in the City will carry you through the holiday parties, the family gatherings, and when you just need some downtime this holiday season. Fill every day of Christmas with songs from favorite artists like Canton Jones and World Changers' very own jazz saxophonist Jeff Sparks and more. Christmas in the City Part 2. Bring it home now for the holiday price of $10. Call or go online to order. I'm sure some of you will agree with me that if it wasn't for the Word of God that's been deposited on the inside of our lives, we'd have lost our mind a long time ago. Shelter at home would have freaked us out, all kinds of stuff. Some of us have been just on the verge. You know, I've had a couple of hours of attack in my emotions to, to have to say, all right, everything's going to be all right. I determine how I feel today. Thank God that I know that. Thank God that I've grown to a place where I know how powerful it is to make a confession and take authority over my thoughts. But look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Wow. I want to say to you that God's grace is sufficient for you. It's more than enough. It's all you'll ever need. God's grace is sufficient for you. He says, For my strength is made perfect in what? In weakness. Wow. God says my strength works perfectly in weakness. He says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. And look at the next verse. Therefore, I take pleasure. Listen to Paul. Paul says, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And you wonder why some of your family is tripping out because they're thinking, you know, oh my God, look at what they're going through. They're so weak. And then instead of them seeing weakness, they see strength. When, when, when at the loss of a loved one, instead of them seeing weakness, they see strength. When you lost your job, instead of them seeing weakness, they see strength. Because you know that God's grace is sufficient for you. You know whatever you lost is going to come back seven times more than, than it was before you lost it. You know that God has never left you alone. You know that in the time of famine, God says you will lack no good thing. And you also know that whenever you're weak, He is strong. That the power of God is revealed more on you in the middle of hard times than ever before. And that's what I believe what's happening right now. In the middle of this pandemic, the devil just doesn't understand that all he's doing is causing the power of God to be revealed like never before. That all he's doing is allowing you to rise up in strength like never before. Some of you are some, somewhat shocked to, be, to look at your life and you're wondering, how is it that I'm making it through this? And I say that his grace is sufficient for you. I say that his unmerited favor is sufficient for you. I mean, how is it that you can get promoted and you ain't even been in the office in six months? His grace is sufficient for you. How is it that you can be diagnosed with COVID and never had a symptom? His grace is sufficient for you. How is it that your relationships, which were bad, are now better than they have ever been before? His grace is sufficient for you. And you have others who are wondering, why is this not happening for me? Because they trust in themselves more than they trust in their God. And I trust in God that when I am weak, that's when I am strong. Let that encourage you today. Amen? We have to choose to rest 
on God's promises. We do. We are, we are free moral agency. I got to choose to rest in God's promise. I can choose, you know, if I'm under attack and I choose not to rest in God's Word, then, then I become a victim of the wrong choice. There is a way, uh, there's a path that leads that to a destruction, but some people think it's going to lead to something else. And so despite what we may be going through and what may be going on in our lives, we have to choose God's promises. You have to choose God's promises, and, and that's contentment that will not be complacent in the midst of circumstances. Now look at first, uh, first Timothy chapter 6, First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6 through 8, and I'm going to show you now how to use contentment to, to, to walk in great gain. I am prophesying great gain in your life, great gain, gain in your relationships, gain on your job, gain in wisdom, gain in your finances, gain in your love, love, love walk. Look what he says here, 1 Timothy chapter 6, I'm, I'm going to look at uh, 6 through 8. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. All right, now notice something. He just said, if you, if you add godliness with being content, it's going to produce great gain. I don't know about you, but I believe the word. Godliness plus contentment is equal great gain. How do you want great gain in your life? He says, all right, now you learn how to be content, that's cool, but let's add some godliness with that contentment. He says, for we brought nothing into this world. It's certain that we can carry nothing out and he says, and having food and clothes or raiment, let us be therefore content. So he says, so whatever I have, let me be content. You know, I didn't bring anything in this world, so if I have something, let me be satisfied as I prepare to go to the next level. But he says, here's how you can get to the next level. Let's be godly too. Not just be content, but let's just be, let's be godly as well. Hallelujah, because godliness uh, with contentment brings about great gain. That's a powerful truth, man. You know, I've come to realize that our world and the world we live in today lives in a constant state of discontentment. Think about it. it, it look, look, listen to the news. Look at people. Go to the social media. Our world lives in a constant state of discontentment. I mean, they're just not happy with anything. They're not happy with their wife or with their husband. They're not happy with their children. They're not happy with their leaders. They're, uh, they're not happy with the things that they have. They're not happy with their house. I mean, it's just too small or, or, or it doesn't have this or that. Or, uh, they're not happy with their TV because it's outdated and, and they're not happy with their cell phone because it doesn't have 5G technology. It, 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 we live in a world filled with discontentment. So how do, you, how do you find contentment in such a restless world? How do you find contentment amongst a nation of people that are so discontent? Well, I'm going to tell you the answer. You may not like it, but it is the answer. You yield to Jesus, the only real source of contentment. Ah, yeah, Brother Dollar, but I don't believe in God. Well, now that ought to give you the reason why things are like they are. You yield to Jesus, the only source of your contentment, the only source of contentment. You can try to, you know, use your self-effort to try to manufacture contentment, but it's not going to be true contentment without Jesus Christ. And the day you yield to Jesus Christ is the day that you walk away from discontentment. It, it's a day that you become so grateful and so thankful. It's the day that you have help. Your unseen partner, Jesus Christ, shows up. You yield to Jesus, who's the only real source of contentment. I'm calling everybody today who doesn't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I'm telling you, you're never going to know what I'm talking about today. You're never going to know what I'm preaching on today because in order to know this, you need to know Jesus, the real source of your contentment. Many of us are trying to fill a void of some kind in our lives, and unfortunately, we try to fill that void with things that can't really satisfy. <laughs> Man, that's, that's this country right now, trying to fill a void with things that just, just can't satisfy. I mean, I've tried that. It just doesn't satisfy. 
We look to fill the void with possessions or money, but we only end up wanting more and more and more, and it doesn't satisfy. You thought the big house was going to satisfy? You thought the new, the new nice car was going to satisfy? You thought, you thought expensive clothes were going to satisfy? You thought, you know, a, 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 a woman that was so beautiful to everybody else was going to satisfy? We try to fulfill it with relationships. We try to fulfill it with sex. But we end up feeling even more empty and depressed than when we started. Is that you? Have you been trying to fill that void with relationships, with sex, and even right now you feel more empty and more depressed than when you started the whole process? Wow. We try to fill it with possessions, and we end up wanting more. And when those things become the end goals and the reason for our being, we end up being discontent. Why? because those things were never meant to fulfill us in the first place. Only Jesus can do that. They were never meant to fulfill us. Only Jesus can do that. You see, I believe that there's going to be a great harvest of souls coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they just need somebody to tell them. They just need Christian people, instead of walking around looking sanctimonious, to be sensitive to the fact that that person needs Jesus. And it's not going to be hard now because the Holy Spirit is ready for this to happen, man. And if somebody could just take the time and, and bear witness to Jesus, people are going to accept him. There are going to be atheists to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. There are going to be people who, who, who stopped coming to church years ago coming to Jesus Christ. There are going to be people who made it plain, I don't believe in Jesus and all of a sudden, they're ready to believe and receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and personal Savior. Let me share some scripture with you to show this to you in scripture because here are, here are some things based on these scriptures that I believe if we do these things, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find ourselves going towards and down that path of contentment. Look at Romans chapter 12 and 2. Romans chapter 12 and 2. I believe if you do this, you're going to start down that path of, con of contentment. Uh, let's look at this in the New Living Translation, uh, Romans chapter 12 and 2. He says this, he says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Wow. God can transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. God can turn you into a new person by changing the way you think. And in, in, isn't that the case with, with most of our country? You don't, you don't want to, you, you, don't, you don't think you need to change the way you think. You're, you're so inundated with the wrong information, which you think is the right information, and you're so convinced that, that this godly information is just the wrong kind of information. And look at your life. And he says, if you can just change the way you think, you can change your whole life. So he says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of the world. But let God transform your, you into a, a per, new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. If you change the way you think and start thinking in line with the Word of God, then you'll know God's Word and will for your life, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God's will for your life is good and pleasing and perfect. God's will for your life is good and pleasing and perfect. But there's just some people who, I don't believe that. And that's why... That's why I really, really thank God for allowing me to, to, to teach more than I preach. I, we've got to change the way we think. You know, renewing your mind, it, it's, not a, it's, not a, 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 it's not an event. It's a, it's a lifetime process, not an event. It's, it's, it's what I do for, for life. And I mean, what else has to happen before you realize that your, your old way of thinking is not working? How many more years do you have to waste in losing your life before you come to a place and realize, I had it wrong. I've been going down the wrong path. And I know there are people who make fun of me. It's, you know, even if I talk, talk, t teach this stuff right here, you, you have more confidence in your universities as they give you fables and philosophies that are, are only designed to leave you, lead you down a path of destruction. 
And here is God who says, I want to give you something so you can prove the perfect will of God, which is good and pleasing and perfect, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I'm not talking about you getting saved and just getting involved in the, the, the emotional cartwheels of salvation. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about changing the way you think. I'm talking about getting in the Word and allowing the Word to change your thinking and trusting the only one that can bring you to a place of real satisfaction and real contentment. And so contentment in life starts with renewing your mind and thinking differently from the world's way of thinking. I believe when you renew your mind with God's Word, then I believe you're going to be, you're going to proceed down that path of contentment. Look at this scripture, Proverbs 14, 30 in the NLT. Proverbs 14, 30 in NLT. This is what happens when you just, you can't get out of discontentment. And I know people who con live a constant life of discontentment. And in verse, uh, verse 30, he says, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. He says, jealousy is like cancer in the bones. And I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, discontentment and stress will rob you of health, but contentment and peace gives life to the body. You cannot allow these issues of jealousy that will come from discontentment, envy, unforgiveness, all these things that come from being discontent. He says it's like cancer in the bones. And, and look at your life. Listen, listen, even if you just say to yourself, I don't believe what you're saying, at least look at your life. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. You're 20 years old, looking like you're 50. What's wrong? A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Amen. Look at Job. Let's go to Job. Job 36, 11 in the NIV. Job 36 and 11 in the NIV. I believe as we take the wisdom from these scriptures and begin to apply them to our lives, we're going to go to a place where God can do some great things with us. He says, if they listen and obey God, they will be blessed with prosperity throughout their lives. All their years will be pleasant. Wow. If they listen and obey God. In other words, a relationship where God can lead you and guide you. A relationship where God is priority in your life. A relationship that has grown to a point where you become this barefooted priest and, and you hear God with clarity, a relationship where God uh, has been given honor to begin to speak into your life and, and that you, you carry out what he says. He says, when you get to that place, he says, you'll be blessed with prosperity and success throughout your life and your years will be pleasant. But you don't take the time to develop a relationship with God. You don't take the time to hear him, and you know, it, it, when you get in the Word, the written Word of God helps to tune your ears to be able to hear from God. And during the time of, of all of the craziness in our world, we need to hear from God. You need to hear from God. You can't play religion. You can't, you, know, you, you can't, this is the way we go to church. You've got to hear from God. What is God saying? There's a new thing that's happening right now. There's a reset that's taking place. There's a recycle. There's a retooling that's taking place. God has been recycling you and retooling you and revamping you and resetting you. Now it's time to be able to hear him and to listen to his voice. See what he has to say. Serving God will allow you years in contentment. Contentment that takes you from one level to the next level to the next level. And then finally, in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23 in the NIV, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23 in the NIV, um, he says, the fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rest content untouched by trouble. <laughs> the fear of the Lord leads to life. The reverencing of God, the honor of God, the respect of God. He says, then you rest content and you're untouched. That's powerful. Untouched by trouble. You can be in the midst of trouble, but you can be untouched by trouble. In the midst of the COVID-19, but untouched by COVID-19. 
in the midst of hatred, but no hatred in your heart, in the midst of famine, in the midst of wondering where the money's going to come from, but it shall not come near you. You will, not, you will be untouched by that. All these verses confirm that you can find contentment only in Jesus Christ. So what do we do? Well, we get in the Word. We get in prayer. We fellowship with Him. We find contentment in Jesus. I'm hungry for a people that will say, God is my priority. God is my priority. That I won't let any other thing in life take this place of priority. I'm so happy that you joined us for this word this morning, that you made logging on and becoming a, a part of our services, you made it a priority. You could have did a lot of things, you made it a priority. You might not be home, but you have that device with you. You've made it a priority. I've seen people uh, and been told that there are people in Walmart and other stores and they have their phones on several people in the same place making their confessions, but they made it a priority. What happens when you make Jesus your priority? What happens when he is first place in your life? Don't let him slide down to the last place. Stick with this word. Log on every Sunday. Join us on every Wednesday, every Saturday, every day for confessions. Feed on the Word. Grow from the nourishment from God's Word. And when the church comes back into the buildings, we will show and demonstrate a power that the planet has never seen, and you're doing it even so now. Even so now, in your individual homes and in your families, you're doing it right now. God is renovating. God is changing. God is preparing. Some of you are going to be prepared for immediate mission for the kingdom of God because of what God is doing right now. I don't know, somehow or another, maybe he had to take you and put you in boot camp. Uh, I, I don't know. God knows how to use every crazy thing for, for his good. But some of you have been preparing for the last six months. You may be preparing for another three months more but you are not going to be the same. You cannot be the same. You are not the same. You're no longer complacent, but you are a person of great contentment, and that contentment can only be found in Jesus Christ. Do you know someone who's satisfied with the way things are and makes no effort to better themselves or their circumstances? That attitude of complacency is a deadly threat to a successful Christian life and prevents us from maturing in God. Creflo Dollar, in his revelatory new series, Power Over Complacency, uncovers how to live free from this dangerous attitude. God is working some big things in you right now. He got you at home trying to work some junk out of you and, and trying to get you to get out of your complacency because he's getting ready to use you. He's getting ready to bring some dreams to pass in your life, things that you would never have, things that you never walk in. You're going to be walking in it. You're going to know what it's like to live days of heaven on the earth. And the only thing that can destroy that, your commitment and your yieldedness to complacency. Call or visit the website below to get all three messages today for your love gift of only 20 U.S. dollars or more. Trinidad and Tobago. The 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. If you'll just trust him and believe him that there's a will of God for your life, there's something I'm supposed to do, and I will not miss it this year. I, I had to come to see Christ. Once I heard he was here, it was like a dream. Like, I, I don't even do this for celebrities. Like, when I heard he was here, I'm coming. I'm coming. You will be satisfied. God's got your back. There's profit in serving God. Tell all your unsaved relatives. Tell your unsafe family member. Today was a really revolutionary me message and it gives you such peace in your heart. You don't want to miss this experience. Register now for this free event by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. One of the most powerful weapons in the kingdom of God is prayer. 
You know, the Bible says that where two or three are gathered together, God is in the midst of them. And that's why it's good to, to pray with someone who believes God's Word and, and can help encourage you. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer changes things. And I'd like to take this moment to pray with you right now. And I'll, let's, let's believe God. Somebody says, you don't even know what's going on with me. It, 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 come on, let's, let's just pray together. Father, I thank you right now that those who are viewing this broadcast, that you are perfecting everything that concerns them. You know exactly what's going on, and you've already made provisions for that situation. So I am agreeing with them, and Lord, we bring it to you, and it's settled right now. We're not after victory. We already have victory. We stand in that by faith, in Jesus' name. Now, I'm believing with you and you believe with me that what we just prayed is manifesting in your life and all is well. God loves you and he delights in hearing and answering your prayers. To request prayer for anything, simply call in or visit creflodollarministries.org to share your prayer request today. Creflo and Taffy Dollar would like to wish you and yours the best Christmas ever. And here to help you celebrate is Arrow Records Christmas in the City Part 2 CD. Break out the traditional Christmas favorites like Jingle Bells and Joy to the World by World Changer's very own worship leader, Jonathan Phillips. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs hear. Christmas in the City will carry you through the holiday parties, the family gatherings, and when you just need some downtime this holiday season. Fill every day of Christmas with songs from favorite artists like Canton Jones and more. Get busy decorating, shopping, and cooking to the tunes of Christmas in the City Part 2. Bring it home now for the holiday price of $10. Call or go online now for Christmas in the City Part 2. We have one mission, to tell the world that our God is alive. Because all that we are is because of who Jesus is. Not just because he died, but because he lives. Because he cares. Because he loves. And because he is God. So who are we? We are his hands, his feet, his people. We are His church. So we take His message of grace all around the world to the fatherless, to the hungry, to the hurting, to the old, and to the young we go. As He is, so are we. We are world changers. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. 